Hi, so my name is Jay Hanna, and I wanted to talk about instant runoff voting. And I'm, I'm hoping that other people know more about this than I do, because I started my diligent researching today. I was like, oh, hey, there's still a slot available. I'll give a talk. This will be great, right? So we'll see how this goes. Um, all of this was today, and it's from two websites. It's either Wikipedia, this rangevoting.org, which I found just via Googling. So uh, you already know that I've stolen all my materials. So. No one sue me, please. That'd be great. So the question is, are you happy with how voting works today? So you walk into the voting booth, and for any given position, you get to choose one person, and you mark that box, and you're done. Right? That's the process for that box. Uh, are you voting against people that you uh, don't want to be voting for, but you really don't want this other person in, and so you're voting this person, but they're not your first choice. Like, if you could have anybody on your ballot, are the people that are on your ballot actually the people that are your first choice for that position? Um, I also have this theory that there's a polarization that occurs because of our two-party system, where politicians on the one end of the spectrum are pressured into one of two playbooks, right? We've got a two-party system in this country for my whole lifetime, and either you're embracing the platform of one party or the other party, and you have to conform to that quite a bit to be the candidate from the party, uh, except for maybe recent history. And in my experience, in my opinion, voters have few and not the greatest choices. So I don't know what, if you're happy. I, I haven't been since I've been old enough to vote. Imagine we're going to design together the worst possible way that voting can work. And this is stolen straight from that website, so I don't get any credit here. But imagine the worst way to possibly vote. And I won't, I won't read you these slides, but I, I think this is what happens in our system. I think that we end up with very few candidates, and we end up with, we end up voting, if you vote at all, for people we don't want, but we're voting so that somebody else doesn't win. I've experienced this quite a bit. I don't know if you have or not. So there's this other system instead of the system that we use, and it's called instant runoff voting, or IRV, and it's also known by lots of other names, and I'm sure there's technical differences, and these aren't all the exact same thing, and depending on who you ask or what website you look at, there's probably changes and fine-tuning that goes on in all these things, but um, this, the system exists. And I'm going to try to convince you that this would be a good idea, and you can tell me that I'm wrong. So here's how IRV works. Hopefully this is something everyone can understand. You could explain it to anybody in two minutes, and they'd understand what it is. Pick as many people as you want and rank them in order of the order in which you want them. And you can vote for everybody in order if you want, or you can just vote for one person, you know, your number one candidate. Or you can vote for everybody, putting whoever you dislike the most, you want the least, dead last, on your ballot. And this, this seems pretty simple, and it's like, oh, great, okay, people can wrap their heads around how this works, but now we don't just have, when the voting is done, we don't just have a single, a single integer and we can just sort it, right, and know who won instantly. Like, like anyone can see who won, that's the person who got 27 million votes or whatever. So how does IRV work once you have everybody putting in a bunch of different numbers? So there's a little flow chart. And the first thing you do is you see, okay, I'm going to take everybody's first choice. Everybody's first choice. And if everybody's first choice has a majority for the election, they won. All done. Wasn't that simple? So we could easily do that, and that's kind of the math that goes into the current system is whoever has the most votes wins. There's only one round. But sometimes that won't happen. Sometimes when you take everybody's first choice, because I'm weird, so I'd vote for a lot of people that aren't super popular, right? So I, I have some unpopular opinions, and I'd pick people that traditionally aren't going to win. Right? And I'd pick those people as like my first and second choices. But the problem in our current system is as soon as I do that, I've thrown my vote away. Right? These are spoiler candidates who ruin it for one of their two party systems. But in this system, how it works is if I, whoever I chose for number one, uh, if someone doesn't have a clear majority of the number one choices, you eliminate the last place candidate 
And then my number, like say my person was totally unpopular, only three people voted for that person. My number one pick is eliminated, but I voted for two, three, four, five. My votes two, three, four, five now become my one, two, three, four votes, right? So my number one vote is now counted equally against your number one vote, even though you wanted a very popular person, I wanted a very unpopular person. And you run the algorithm again. You say, okay, now that Jay's candidate has been eliminated because nobody wants who Jay wanted, that was stupid. Jay still has a number one vote because it's what he put down as number two and we run the algorithm again and eliminate another person as necessary. Eventually you find a winner. So you need computers, luckily we have computers, it's 2016, we don't all have to you know, go around on uh, horse and carriage to try to figure this stuff out nowadays. Here's an example. Bob, Sue, and Bill are running for office and there's five voters, these A through E, right? And everybody votes three times. They say, here's my number one choice, two choice, three choice. And in the first round, what we're looking for is, did someone with all the first votes counted clearly have a victory? Because if they did, there's only one round and we're all done. In this case, when you count everyone's first choice, Bill only had one vote as first choice and Bob and Sue had two. So you eliminate Bill and now you start over. So if your first place vote, like voter C, voted Bill number one, right? Voter C's vote is not thrown away. Voter C's votes are now adjusted so that Sue is voter C's first choice and voter C's second choice is Bob and the election goes again, right? So you eliminate one candidate and you run it again and Sue is victorious in round two. So I don't know if you can convince everyone that this is a system that can work, uh, but maybe you can, I don't know. Talk to some people about whether or not they would vote for getting IRV as a voting system. It gets more complicated sometimes because sometimes you've got 20 candidates. So in District 5 in San Francisco in 2004, it took 19 rounds of the algorithm to figure out who won this election. But like I said, we have computers, right? So, hey, this can all happen in seconds or minutes or something. So Ross was in the lead most of the time, it looked like? Yeah, Ross had the most number one votes through all of the passes, but not enough to win. He didn't have a majority of number one votes until round 19. Are there examples where, you know, Jill comes from behind and Jill Stein is now the winner? Uh, I don't know that Jill Stein has won with IRV voting uh, yet, no. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So I've got a slide on monkeying with the system, which might, might be interesting to some people. Uh, we have computers. If you can trust people to accept that, hey, voting for more than one in order of preference is okay, then, you know, maybe this is a generational shift, yeah. Uh, I've got a little list, so in, in Wikipedia there's a list of like eight countries that have been involved on the, on historically. Yeah. Oh, so here's, so this isn't a new idea, here's uh, this Wikipedia page, knows a lot more about this than I do, and uh, uh, the UK is looking at it, there's a current press for, yeah, for, for the national elections in the UK again. So there's, there's historical information on this Wikipedia page about the UK specifically. Brexit is a special heat in this. Brexit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> ah, Brexit. All right, this is not a talk about Brexit, though. <laughs> I have opinions. All right, here's one way that I, th this is a really interesting way of messing with the system, and maybe this is not accurate, uh, but it seems, maybe this is a fictitious uh, scenario that wouldn't actually happen. But this is one of the interesting slides that I found, arguments against, there's lots of critiques of all of these IRV systems. So, uh, from the, uh, should I even try to do this? All right, from the perspective of one of the people with the best middling and worst candidates, if you know that in your opinion, the best candidate cannot win, it becomes clear to you throughout the election, through polling, I suppose, that your best candidate can't possibly win, this argument here, I don't know if this is a good argument or not, but it's one I found and I was staring at three hours ago and I'm like, is this a good argument? This, through this mechanism, 
I can get the middling person elected, and for me, that's a victory because, hey, the worst person didn't get elected. The middling person got elected because I now uh, submitted a dishonest opinion of my who's best, middlest, middle and worst. So is, is this a real problem or one of those, you know, 1% of 1% problems that doesn't actually happen? Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the purity, the beauty of the system is that I can be honest on my ballot about who I want in what order. And here's an example of where I'm going to be dishonest about my ballot in order to engineer the results of the ballot. And I thought this was fascinating, and maybe this is not... What do you think? I, well, I think that's ideal, but I think that's not what makes this system better specifically. I think what makes this system better is, is a bit what you pointed out. We have a first-past-the-post system. That's the meme of it, mm -hmm. like voting theory. And in a first-past-the-post system, the first one to 50% wins. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is, is that it, 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 it constructs a scenario in which the, the agents who are, um, who are uh, running so, so, so let's say that, um, that you're dissatisfied. You have two people and you're dissatisfied with both choices, so you decide you want to pick a third one. That third one will probably not be exactly between the two choices, and therefore it will actually cause, uh, it'll cause more people to be dissatisfied because that third candidate is going to appeal more right, to people who would have gone with candidate A, which secures candidate B's victory. The current system actually has like a provable like, game-theoretic systemic tendency towards dissatisfying. In this situation, strategic voting seeks cooperation. You're, you're going with your, your middle candidate rather than the worst one. So, when you, so when, you, when you cheat in this system, you're trying to cooperate with people. When you cheat in the current system, you, you, it goes against cooperation. It, may, it means the majority of people um, end up being dissatisfied. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and you don't, it'd be nice to set up an experiment where CGP people are trying to rig video, this. Sorry, CGP Gray has a whole video series on this. It's already really started hitting, the U he's, he's from the United Kingdom, and it's when it really started hitting UK uh, politics. He, uh, a series of videos on trying to manipulate IRV? No, no, I'm sorry, oh. on, on, on why IRV is bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. He goes, he goes through some of the arguments. He goes like, okay, yeah, like there are some downsides. Here's what they are, but they're so much worse. In first right. Class than like <laughs> <laughs> All right, did this make any sense to anybody? It took me about 30 minutes, <laughs> so I've given you three. <laughs> um, and here's another chart I found just interesting about uh, what IRV countries currently exist versus proportional representation. And I don't think I understand this well enough to talk about it, but I found it really interesting that propor proportional representation countries also, that's a whole different voting system that uh, I'm, I'm trying to understand if this chart tells me something intelligent. So I've, I'm throwing it out to the, I'm crowdsourcing my not understanding this chart. Uh, so, if anyone's interested in this at all, we could start like a Facebook group or a mailing list or Twitter or whatever, a uh, Slack channel or whatever people are interested in, because uh, you now know everything I know, and none of us knows as much as Alex knows. Alex, sorry. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, so just come talk to me or start the group and I'll join it or whatever. Um, any questions or further discussion? Or? Where are these implementations? Uh, do you want just a software algorithm that does the... Like, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty simple... That's all it is. Gem install IRV voting. IRV. Oh, I can write a Perl module for you. I'm not there sure I could write a gem. <laughs> I can put something on CPAN. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, my, my th I, I'm not aware of any. Is anyone aware of anything in Nebraska or... That it's trying to do any IRV stuff. My my theory. This is my gut. My huh? Maybe it starts today. Aha! If elected, I will not serve. Um, my my gut reaction. My gut thought is that if we had more diversity, more honest opinion diversity in our politics, that we'd all be better off. And the first past the post, our current system, I think dissuades that. Um, this dissuades people actually having honest opinions, representing their honest opinions outside of the uh, mandatory context of the two major political parties, right? Like, I don't care what the you know, party leadership says, I, this is the way that I want to lead. And then on the other side, on the voting side, giving people the ability to just honestly vote for who they prefer 
And I, I, it seems to me that it's not that complicated, and we have computers, and you can compute it. So uh, it seems like to me like a really good thing. So.